Today, we are gonna compare uh, Firebender with uh, Juni to see which one is better. We're gonna explore uh, four different comparison categories, like uh, pricing, user experience, speed, and the uh, code quality. So first, let's start with Juni. Juni offers uh, three packages or uh, pricing plans. The least expensive is 10 euros. Then we have uh, 30 euros and uh, 60. Juni also offers uh, annual plans, and for each and every plan, you are getting a bit of discount as well. Now, the Firebender on the other hand, contains uh, much more uh, pricing plans actually and it uh, does offer a free tire for one week that's one a small advantage of uh, using the firebender unlike the juni other than that we can see a uh, package of uh, 30 dollars uh, per month we have a 75 and even a 150 so those are individual plans down below we also have a uh, business plans where we can see that the place or a spot per user is a 60 dollars and we have even the enterprise uh, option for uh, bigger companies now unlike the juni the firebender does not have the annual plan or it might have but uh, as you can see here uh, we don't see any option for it which means that they are probably relying mostly on a uh, monthly subscriptions but other than that i think that both firebender and uh, juni are pretty similar when it comes to pricing so i would say that uh, in this case for the pricing category it's tie so I'm not going to choose a clear winner in this uh, category, obviously. But nonetheless, uh, now we're going to test uh, other categories like the user experience, speed and code quality. For that matter, I have prepared uh, a project of mine called uh, Swipeable. So this is the new library which I'm currently working on. I'm planning to publish it in a few days. And before that, I need to uh, do some refactoring. For example, here we have a max drag distance parameter, which is a fixed value. So I want to remove this parameter and instead rely on the threshold parameter to decide the maximum drag distance, okay? Because it makes more sense. So I wanna first start with the Juni and ask it to refactor my code. But before that, I also want to here uh, open up a, uh, a stopwatch so that we can see uh, which one is actually faster, okay? Okay, so here it is. And we are going to uh, trigger it as soon as we write our prompt. So I'm gonna here just reference this uh, code in Juni. So I'm first time using Juni, uh, by the way. I'm uh, mostly relying on a Firebender, and that's why I wanted to make the comparison here. Okay, so let's hear right now. I want to remove this uh, parameter and instead rely on the threshold uh, parameter to decide the maximum drag distance of my swipeable component. Refactor the code. Go. Let me just here do that pretty quickly. So click the button and then start the stopwatch. Okay, there it is. I'm gonna now maximize this window. So currently the June is obviously uh, scanning our project. So it's planning uh, what it should do uh, with this uh, change that we have asked, right? So it's uh, scrolling down below. It's uh, triggering uh, some uh, operations, obviously. So we're gonna wait now and see uh, how long it will take for the for the journey to actually complete this uh, test. So it's not a too complex task, uh, by the way. But nevertheless, uh, we just want to see uh, how long it will take for the journey to to make it happen, right? And we're gonna of course uh, test this application uh, after that and uh, see if it will work the same way as uh, it is working right now. So let me just here open up that uh, swipeable app. So as you can see, this is uh, that kind of a component that we currently have. So that component has uh, uh, an option to track the progress and so on. Uh, we have some a uh, bunch of different out of the box animations along the way uh, and it's really nice uh, nice library okay so it's now uh, updating this uh, progress let's see what is happening here so in the code i don't see any change yet okay so now we have an, a message that says it's editing the swipeable uh, uh, kt file okay so now uh, that the parameter has been removed actually it has also changed uh, other different uh, things in here so it created the new variables here so instead of the max drag distance pixels, uh, now it's um, uh, calculating the component width. Let me just see where that component width actually is. Uh -huh. So yeah, it's used the on size change the uh, modifier to calculate our component width. Uh, personally, I don't think that's uh, the best choice. I think that there is much better solution by using a box with the constraints instead. But we will see uh, if this is going to work. Okay, so let me see. It has, uh, I think, finished. Okay, uh, run command. So let's now build our project to see if everything works great. It also uh, modified uh, my readme as well as the app uh, Kotlin file. So in the app Kotlin file, we have a bunch of different uh, components uh, actually. And yeah, it just removed the data parameter from my components in the app Kotlin file for each and every uh, case here. Okay, so now we are building the project. We are waiting for everything to be uh, 
finish. Currently we are at uh, 3 minutes. But yeah, let's just wait to see when it will finish. And then we are going to try um, with a Firebender with that the same task. So again, I'm going to revert these changes that the Juni has made after I test and see if it works. And then we're going to try it with a Firebender to see how the Firebender will solve this issue and whether this uh, issue will be solved in a much cleaner way. And uh, yeah, if it's going to be faster than Juni, obviously. So without this uh, building process, it took uh, around three minutes, okay? So it's already five minutes and uh, I'm just going to stop this uh, whole uh, build process. So uh, I don't need that at this point. I'm just going to run the app and uh, see if it uh, works. So yeah, our application works uh, pretty much the same as before. So we don't have any uh, issues, right? So the Juni uh, did complete the task that we have actually requested. However, uh, now I want to revert those changes and try with the Firebender instead. So we don't have any option to revert those changes one by one. Instead, we only have an option to roll back everything. But nevertheless, let's just click on it. So yeah, let's roll back everything. There it is. And I want to now try with the Firebender. So let's click or actually select this max uh, drag distance parameter. I'm going to just paste it right here. As you can see, Unlike the Juni, when I paste the code uh, from my uh, Kotlin file in here, it will not bloat my whole chat. Instead, it will just um, display this uh, simple link that will point from that specific line of code or from the start of the block to the end of the block, which is much more cleaner way. And even if I have hundreds of uh, code lines right here, it will not bloat my chat. It will make it more cleaner. Also, a great thing about the Firebender is that I don't have to write anything. I can use the microphone and just uh, speak. So let's do that. So here uh, we want to remove the max drag distance uh, parameter and instead use the threshold parameter to calculate the maximum drag distance. We don't need any hard-coded uh, values like in this case and instead we want to use the relative values of the threshold property. So let's refactor this uh, code. Go. Now we can click uh, send and then start the stopwatch. Let's see now uh, what kind of a result uh, we are going to get uh, with the Firebender. Currently, it's, uh, of course, uh, analyzing our code. So it, uh, it is planning uh, the structure. So it should remove that uh, max drag distance parameter, uh, calculate that distance from the threshold parameter, and update all relevant documentation usage that we already have uh, in our project. Okay, so down below, it's, uh, it is planning a couple of steps. Currently, it's in the process of removing the max drag distance parameter. Uh, there it is. In our code, we're going to see here a red highlight that is uh, indicating that we are actually removing this part of the code. We can either uh, accept or reject uh, each and every change separately with Firebender, unlike the Juni where we are uh, rolling back uh, all these changes uh, at once. So uh, write down in the comment section if you think that the Juni also has this feature, because I still haven't noticed that. Uh, anyhow, currently we are now seeing uh, what changes uh, the Firebender is applying. So the maximum drag distance here in this case uh, will be now defined internally in this composable function. And so based on our swipe behavior, so we have this miss and reveal behavior. And based on this property, it will uh, calculate that uh, max drag distance by itself. So I have noticed that uh, it's trying to create a separate logic for different kind of uh, swipe behavior. So for the dismiss, it's using the actual screen width. But for the reveal, it's actually using 20% of the screen width as the base. Okay, so uh, now it's uh, in the last step, so 4 or 5, it's now testing and currently we are at 3 minutes. So yeah, it's practically the same as uh, with uh, the uh, Juni. So they both took uh, the same amount of time. And now let's just uh, launch this application again to see if this new solution is going to work uh, pretty much the same way as before. So yeah, uh, the application works uh, seamlessly for uh, both uh, swipe behavior uh, dismiss and the reveal, as you can see. So practically from those uh, four different categories that uh, I have tested these uh, AI uh, assistants, so pricing, uh, user experience, speed, and uh, code quality, I would say that the Firebender wins only because of the user experience category. Because we can obviously see uh, how much uh, flexible and uh, easier it is to use a Firebender. So we have a microphone option. We don't have to write uh, our prompt. When we are referencing our code from here, we don't bloat our chat. Instead, we are just uh, creating here one uh, short link that points to that uh, same uh, part of the code, which is pretty convenient. And also, for each and every change in our project, uh, we can click uh, accept, uh, reject, or even accept uh, everything uh, all at once. We even have an option here to review the next file that was changed. So it's really uh, so simple to, to use it, uh, unlike the Juni. I didn't have those options, or at least I didn't see them. Since this is the first time uh, using Juni, I've only noticed that I can uh, roll back all the changes at once, but not uh, individually one by one. 
So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below if I have missed uh, something about uh, Juni. But bottom line, I think that uh, both of these uh, AI assistants are really helpful, so they can save you a ton of time. They are indeed uh, helpful, and uh, both of them provide a really good solutions. In the past few months, I have used uh, the AI assistant uh, extensively, and to be honest, when it came to uh, implementing some kind of a feature that required a lot of work, like for example a week of work, uh, using the AI, I was able to implement the feature in a single day instead of seven days, right? So so the difference is drastic. And uh, if you are not using the AI assistant in your uh, everyday workflow, then you are missing a lot. And that's a fact. So whether it's Juni or a Firebender, you should pick one that you think is best for you and start using it. Because otherwise, you're gonna be left behind. So that's it. Uh, this was a quick comparison between a Juni and a Firebender. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below if you have something to add uh, to this little experiment that uh, I have just created. And of course, don't forget to leave a like to this video if you want to see some more interesting content like this one. Thank you for watching.